Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do a manga discussion of Claudine by Ryoko Ikeda. Um, this is not a spoiler-free review. This is me going in-depth on my opinions of this story. So if you do not want spoilers, I suggest you go read this and then come back if you wish uh, to this video once you've already read it. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to get right into it. So Claudine is a very, very short um, in English released by Seven Seas, uh, manga by uh, Ryoko Ikeda. It was written originally in Japan in 1978, um, and very, very early uh, trans representation in media in general, but, you know, especially in manga in Japan, um, and in particular, representation of trans men, which is very rare even today. Most of what we see in the media, uh, whether it's, you know, news media or um, other forms of media that are fiction, be it TV shows, movies, books, whatever, uh, we typically see trans women uh, represented. But so when this was announced that it was getting a, an English release, I was extremely fascinated to see how the topic of, of trans people in general, but more specifically trans men, uh, was, was written about in 1978. I was extremely intrigued and, you know, I think this is an important piece of fiction. I think that it is, I'm glad that it exists in the world. Um, and more than anything, it reading this. This was released in 2018 by Seven Seas in English. Um, more than anything, it it really outlined to me and and shouted to me the fact that the media's portrayal, um, the like fictionalized or even just news media as well, media's portrayal of trans men has not come a long way. Um, and I think that this was a pretty progressive, uh, you know, story at the time. But even still in now 2021, um, you know, a lot of the books, the fiction that I was consuming, and there's not much of it, but the fiction I was consuming that had trans male characters or a trans male lead um, are treated in the way that that uh, our main character in this this manga is uh, by by the writer I mean like a lot of the, the the trials and tribulations that our main character in this story deals with is are still the same things that we see today um, and it's quite annoying actually and and to me like this story in particular didn't annoy me um, but it really really shouted to me the lack of progression that we have experienced um, in terms of people writing about the trans experience. And we're seeing a lot more own voices works now um, of people who are actually in the trans community writing about writing fiction um, with trans characters. And that's obviously a whole different ballgame. Um, but in terms of people who are not trans writing about a trans experience, uh, this narrative is unfortunately it has not changed uh, very drastically um, in decades, clearly. So I am going to refer to our main character as Claude, uh, as he and with he, him pronouns, um, as the character very overtly states on numerous occasions that he is male, um, that he is not female. And so I will not be referring to him with, with um, she, her pronouns or uh, the name Claudine, um, that is, so just be aware that even though the name Claudine and she, her pronouns are used for this character throughout the entire book, um, I will not be doing that. So basically we start off, um, this story is being told from the perspective of a therapist. It's set in, I believe, France in the, might be the 1800s actually, um, now I can't remember, but um, it's not set in like present time when this was, when this was written in the, in the seventies. Um, and it is set in France, not Japan. So we follow Claude who at the beginning is about 10 years old or so, 
uh, his mother brings him to this therapist because he uh, he's insisting that he's a boy and his mother's like, no, uh, my daughter is confused and I need you to fix her. Um, and so the therapist is actually quite progressive and is very much like I'm, I'm, you know, and by the end of it says like, I am convinced that this person was transsexual. I'm convinced that he was in fact a man, um, trapped, trapped in a woman's body. Um, so yeah, the other thing too is like, yeah, so this story is not being told from Claude's perspective. It's being told from the therapist's perspective um, in like retrospect of Claude's life and the tragedy that his life was. So we start when he's 10 years old. Um, you know, his mother brings him to this therapist. He's very confident. He's, he's a beautiful uh, boy who's just like no, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a guy. Oh, there's also a nice color page. Um, definitely a guy. Uh, my mother's just concerned about my behavior. Um, whatever. Uh, so then, you know, we see a time skip. We see that, that Claude has multiple older brothers. Um, we see, you know, his relationship with his father. Um, he gets along very well with his father. His father really loves him and treats him like a son. Uh, we meet Rosemary, who is uh, Claude, Claude's age, clearly in love with him, wants him to, you know, in this case, in this scene, be at her birthday party. Um, but, you know, he's not interested in Rosemary. He has no care for her. She, he, he, you know, feels she's clingy and annoying and whatever. Um, she does see him as male, though. She is the only person um, who legitimately treats him like a, uh, like a boy and, and, and acknowledges that he is not female. Um, she's the only person throughout this whole thing who would very much, you know, doesn't ever fall back on the, oh, but you're actually a girl thing. Um, however, Claude's not interested in her. And I, the, the one thing that I really, really, really love about this story is that he did not settle for her because I find that trans people in general, um, trans men, the, the, the narrative that is kind of, you know, sold um, to us is like, if somebody actually, you know, sees you as an actual guy and, you know, likes you and is willing to um, take one for the team, uh, then you should be grateful and you should just, you know, hold on to her or, or whoever you're, whoever the person is, like hold on to them and don't let them go because you finally found somebody who actually uh, will, you know, love you despite your flaw of being different. Um, and I like that this story was not like, let's make him settle after, you know, all of his trials and tribulations with the women he's actually attracted to. Uh, let's make him settle for the girl who actually sees him for who he is when he doesn't actually like her. And it's okay that he doesn't like her. Um, people can still be respectful of your identity and your, your being uh, and still be an annoying person to you. And, you know, conversely, you can, like, you can have feelings for people who are actually shitty people. <laughs> um, and, you know, you can't control who you have feelings for, but you can control your actions. And, you know, he definitely could have made better choices in terms of the, the women that he decides to be with. Um, but I am glad that the story was not like, let's make him just live happily ever after with this girl he doesn't actually like, uh, just because she happens to be the sole person who respects him as a, as a human being. Um, so anyway, he basically goes through uh, a bunch of, I say a bunch, a few, a few women. Uh, one is a housekeeper who his mother catches him with and sends away. That was his first love. Uh, and then he falls in love with a teacher or something like that. And she, yeah, she kind of blatantly is just like, they spend time together. They spend a lot of time together. Um, and then he kisses her and she is, uh, she's like, no, you're a woman, like, you can't, what are you doing? Um, and so he feels, you know, rejected and uh, upset about that, obviously, because he thought that he had this connection with this woman. He meets this other girl who seems 
to actually respect him and love him and they they move in together they're keeping their relationship a secret you know she seemingly kind of sees him as a man and um you know they're they're together uh and he's happy and he's in love and then and then she you know um she meets one of his older brothers and falls for his older brother instead and leaves him um kind of with no explanation she just kind of up and leaves and then he happens to find out that she's with his brother now um by seeing them together on the street and this like that's a plot point that annoys the hell out of me is like that trans men um are they jump from you know woman to woman and none of the women will ever actually see them as a man. They're always, you know, it always comes back to, you know, the woman is going to go find a real man um, rather than this this guy who is who can't ever live up to, you know, a cis man. Um, and that's a narrative that is still in media that depicts trans men today. Uh, it's something that annoys me and frustrates me to no end. Um, because it, it it implies that the only thing that, that trans men live for is, you know, to find a woman who actually, like, to find a woman who loves them, but that is never going to happen because all of them are actually looking for a real man, and they may very well stay around for a little while, but they'll eventually leave you for a real man. And it's it's a really horrible sentiment and then and then obviously you know claude kills himself in the end he sends an ultimatum to the girl he's in love with that you know she needs to choose his brother or him and she doesn't show up and he kills himself and again the trans man killing himself at the end not a new not a new concept today um and it's just it's frustrating and i know that this i totally understand that this was written in 1978 and um but my frustration in reading this comes with the fact that I've read so much fiction about trans men um, and the stuff that I've read that was written long after this follows these same patterns. And it just... So my frustration isn't with this piece of media itself, but more so the fact that I was able to recognize after reading this this story how little progress we've made um, in terms of trans representation in media, trans male representation in media in particular. Um, but that being said, this is, I'm very glad this was released in English. I think that it is, it is a good addition to people's collections, especially folks who want to buy LGBT stories uh, or stories that, that feature um, especially trans characters as it is not as commonly covered. Um, I think this is an interesting piece of history that uh, I'm glad came over to uh, the English audience. Um, the art is obviously stunning. Um, Ryoko Ikeda's kind of atmosphere and uh, you know the backgrounds, the whimsy of it is is really you know pleasant, even in this very unpleasant uh, story full of tragedy. Um, but yeah, I there's a lot of frustration when I read this. But again, it's not at this particular story. It's at the it's it's at the at the um, general representation uh, or yeah representation of trans men in general that that frustrates me. And this kind of has all of the things that that has that have frustrated me for years. It's all in one tiny book, um, but yeah. I think that Ryoko Ikeda, in, in reading The Rose of Versailles as well, um, you can tell that Ryoko Ikeda plays with gender um, and is very, like, like, she didn't have to write this story. And I think that, you know, to, to have written it back in, in the 70s and to clearly feel passionate and feel, um, I don't know if it's, like, sympathy or, or what uh, for this experience, but, like, I'm just not sure. I, I'd be interested to know the intentions behind this work. Because um, I'm just not sure what it is. But I, I, I don't feel like it's ill intentions. Um, 
I don't know. It's just very interesting. And I hope that my thoughts made sense to anybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Claudine is an interesting short work that, um, I don't know. I think that it just, it kind of, I think it can serve as a, as a, as a jumping off point of like, this is where we were. How can we do better? Um, in the future and I, I hope I look forward to future manga that we will get here in North America I think there's one coming is it boys run the riot or something that by the time this video is released it may already be out or the first volume may already be released that I believe that one does feature a trans male character and I could be wrong but I feel like it's an own voices work I could be wrong on that um, but that's one I'm super excited for um, yeah, I just think that this is an interesting piece of history that I have in my collection, and I can't wait, you know, for the future when when we have more trans male representation um, in manga, and I can have them on my shelf and be like, look at where things were in the 70s, and now how far we've come. I, I hope for that day, and I, uh, I do recommend picking up um, Claudine and, and giving it a read. It is an interesting melodramatic mess, um, for sure. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, assuming you have read this as well, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments. Um, thank you for watching.